Hi friends, today we are doing Unit 7, Lesson 8, Constellations and Stars. We're going to start by going over the key vocabulary words that you'll be hearing in today's reading. Our first word is ladle, a spoon or dipper with a long handle and a cup-like end used for serving liquids. Our next word is magnetic, exerting a strong attractive force. Our next word is navigate, to find one's way. Our next word is orient, to identify your position in relation to things around you. And our last word is orienteering, a modern sporting competition in which participants orient their movements by compass or GPS to accomplish a set of goals. We are now going to move into today's reading. It's time for us to head back home to planet Earth. From our home, we can see glimpses of space by looking up into the sky. After our journey, perhaps you won't see the stars as just little twinkling lights in the sky anymore. Now you know they are like our sun the star that is the center of our solar system. You know that up close, stars are really mass powerhouses of super hot gas. The next time you look up in the night sky, perhaps you will study the stars in a new way. They all look about the same size from where you stand on Earth, but you know they're not. They are different sizes. Some are brighter than others and some are hotter than others. Maybe you once thought the stars in the sky were pretty close together, but after taking a ride in our special classroom spaceship, you remember that even though stars look close together in the sky, they are really very, very, very far apart. It's true that stars cluster together to form galaxies. Even when they are clustered together, most stars are still incredibly far apart from other stars in the same galaxy. And they are even farther apart from the stars of other galaxies. There's a lot of space in space. Look up at the sky and try to count the stars. There are a lot of them. On a clear evening, depending on where you are, you can see many of the 2,000 or so stars that can be seen from Earth with the naked eye. All the stars you see are in our Milky Way galaxy. You can't see individual stars from other galaxies without the use of a telescope. But looking between the stars of our galaxy, you may be able to see the distance Andromeda galaxy if it's very dark night and you know just where to look. For thousands and thousands of years, people have been looking up at the night sky, just like you. Human beings have tried to understand the location of the stars and predict their positions each night in the sky. In the grand scheme of the universe, it is a human nature for us to try to understand why things are the way they are and where they fit in. Since ancient times, people have grouped the stars into patterns called constellations. Ancient civilizations saw these constellations as figures of people, animals, and objects. They played connect the dots with the stars by drawing imaginary lines between them to form pictures in the sky. These pictures often told familiar mythological stories about heroes like the Greek hunter Orion, who stands ready with his shield to fight a bull. They were about mythical, mythological animals like Pegasus, the beautiful winged horse. And they were about animals such as Canis Major and Canis Minor. Canis means dog in Latin, and Major means greater. If Canis Major is commonly known as the great dog, it's easy to see who might be following behind. In the stories about Orion the Great Hunter, these two constellations are Orion's faithful hunting dogs, forever following at the heels of their master as they move through the night sky. The very brightest star in our sky, Cyrus, is in the constellation Canis Major and is often called the dog star. Sirius is a very large star compared to our sun and one of the closest stars to our solar system, only a little over eight and a half light years away. People who live in Earth's northern hemisphere see a different set of constellations than people in Earth's southern hemisphere do. Only people in the northern hemisphere can see the, those constellations above Earth's North Pole. Only people in the Southern Hemisphere can see those above Earth's South Pole. However, the constellations above Earth's equator can be seen from both hemispheres. Maybe someday you'll cross the equator, travel to another part of the world, and experience the constellations of the night sky from another point of view. Since ancient times, people have noticed that the stars in the sky and the familiar constellations move in a predictable and interesting way. All of the stars in the sky move in a circular pattern around one point. In the northern hemisphere, the half of the planet Earth north of the equator, there is a star located very near that point in the sky that we call the North Sky or Polaris. Even though all the rest of the stars in the sky change their positions throughout the night, 
the North Star is always located almost directly north. Knowing this has helped sailors and travelers in the Northern Hemisphere for thousands of years to orient themselves. Long before modern navigational tools like compasses and GPS were invented, sailors relied on the star Polaris. Technology has advanced a great deal since those days, so much so that some people like to participate in a modern sporting competition known as orienting, where they use magnetic compasses and GPS to orient themselves and accomplish a task or goal. You, write, you might remember from an earlier lesson that the Earth has a North Pole and a South Pole. These poles act like a magnet. A magnetic compass works because of the Earth's magnetic field. A GPS is a modern device that uses man-made satellites orbiting the Earth to find and tell your position on Earth. Two patterns of stars you may already be familiar with that are visible in the Northern Hemisphere are the Big Dipper and the Little Dipper. Each one looks like a ladle in the sky. The Big Dipper and the Little Dipper are not the official names of the constellations themselves, but are part of two very famous larger constellations. The Big Dipper is a group of stars that is part of the constellation Ursa Major, which means Greater Bear in Latin. The Little Dipper is a smaller group of stars that is part of the constellation Ursa Minor. Suppose it is a dark, starry night and you are trying to find your way through the countryside. You can look up into the night sky and find the Little Dipper. The last star on its handle is the brightest star in the constellation. You just heard about this star named Polaris. It is called Polaris because it is almost directly above the Earth's North Pole. Once you find Polaris, you can find North simply by facing the star. When you are facing North, your back is to the South. Your right side is to the East and your left side is to the West. Now all you have to do is decide which direction to go. Sometimes the Big Dipper is easier to see than the Little Dipper. You can also use the Big Dipper to find the North Star. Just line up the two stars called the Pointer Stars opposite the handle of the Big Dipper's bowl and draw a line through them. The line points up out of the bowl and the Big Dipper right to the North Star on the tip of the Little Dipper's handle. And if you've got the North Star Polaris to point you in the right direction, who needs a GPS? People have been using the stars to navigate or find their way for thousands of years. People who live in the Northern Hemisphere today can still see these and other constellations when they look up in the, in the sky at night. The runaway slaves before the time of the U.S. Civil War saw the ladle in the sky and sang a song telling them to follow the drinking gourd north to freedom. Throughout history, people in different cultures have looked up at the Big Dipper and have seen other pictures besides the famous Water Dipper. And one Greek myth or story about Ursa Major, the jealous goddess Hera, wife of Zeus, turns a maiden named Callisto into a bear. Then, to protect Callisto, the bear Zeus placed her in the sky as a constellation. An Arabian myth describes a coffin that is followed by three mourners. One Native American group saw a bear being followed by three hunters, one of them carrying the pan in which to cook the bear meat. The Norse people of Northern Europe saw Odin's wagon. But what do you see if you live in the Southern Hemisphere? People who live south of the equator in places like Chile, South Africa, and Australia see a different set of constellations than people in the Northern Hemisphere in places like the United States, Canada, Norway, Turkey, and China. On the other side of the world, as they rotate around the South Pole, people look out into the stars of the Milky Way galaxy from a different direction than people north of the equator do. You might be surprised to learn that there is no star directly over the South Pole. There is no south star around which the rest of the stars circle, but there is a small constellation named Octans, very close by, that circles around the spot where a south star would be, if it was there. Octans resemble an octant, an early instrument used for navigation. Not too far away is another constellation familiar to stargazers in the southern hemisphere of the Southern Cross. Let's review the constellations that we have been talking about. The constellations you have heard about today are just a few of the 88 constellations astronomers have identified in Earth's skies. Next time you have a chance to enjoy a dark, starlit night, gaze up into the sky and see if you can find some familiar constellations. If not, have some fun and make up some constellations and stories of your own. Maybe someday you'll cross the equator, travel to another part of the world, and experience the constellations of the night sky from another point of view. You may now move on to Unit 7, Lesson 8, Google Forms.